For those of you just joining us, welcome. Uh, without further ado, uh, let's start today's webinar. All right, so for myself, um, I'll be introducing a GPR, and then for the second half, Augustine will be Augustine will be discussing on the applications of the GPR. So um, today we have four main topics. We have uh, we will be covering the principle of GPR. We will be covering the live eco solution that Josec can offer, and then we will go on to to uh, discuss about uh, two the two GPR equipment that Josec can offer, and then the last one is some of the updates that we have um, to help users uh, improve their user experience with a GPR. Right. So what is ground penetrating ground penetrating radar? So it's actually a geophysical method that uses radar pulses for subsurface imaging. So um, it actually uses uh, radar to detect uh, reflected signals from subsurface. So GPR can be used across a variety of channels. We can use it in rock, we can use it in evo engineering. As you can see on the slide, uh, we can also go to, uh, it can also be used on rock, soil, ice, pavement, and even structures. So what kind of defects or what kind of objects can it detect? It can actually act, uh, it is very, very uh, sensitive to a metallic object. However, it can also detect voids and cracks if they are big enough. Right, so ground penetrating radar is used in these three core um, uh, uh, function in the industry. We use it for SB verification for inspectors to check on the building uh, after they are built, right? We want to verify the uh, structures are built to the standard. The next one is integrity assessment. So uh, it's used for engineering studios, it's used by engineering studios and investigation companies to maybe assess old buildings where they don't have any drawings to start with. So GPI is a good equipment for this kind of uh, application or usage. And the last one um, is for use uh, for heat prevention. So in the industry, I think uh, many uh, companies, they want to assess or even uh, to check the compressive strength of the building, right? So they will need to call uh, to, to extract core samples from buildings. So in order to extract all these cores without hitting a rebar, um, first a user has to detect all the rebar location before uh, placing the rebar, uh, before placing the core equipment to call on the correct area. Right. So for a GPR component, it's actually very simple. First, we have the antenna. Second, we have the encoder. And with this, um, it, it is used to uh, capture data and then eventually pass on to a data logger, in which case uh, for ProSec, we are using an iPad as our data logger. So the, um, using iPad has its uh, pros, right? So uh, we have powerful pro uh, compared, I mean, uh, together with uh, powerful software, iPad. So we have intelligent software at our fingertips. So with this uh, combination, we are able to perform many, many unique and special applications. So a very quick uh, discussion, or uh, maybe uh, to share with you uh, how actually GPR works in capturing a uh, signal. So in this uh, image that you see, um, this is a concrete structure, and then embedded inside the concrete structure, there is a metal rebar. So um, the truck, the, the little uh, device above is uh, what we call a GPR. So as we move along the surface, right, it captures the reflected signal at every location where it moves. So when it, start, uh, when it starts to capture data at the first location, the radar um, that travels to the, uh, to the uh, specimen takes a longer time to uh, detect the signal, right? So um, it comes off as a, a longer time of flight duration. So in the actual data collected over at the right side, you will see a hyperbola kind of uh, imaging that actually represents um, an image, uh, for example, a rebar, right? So um, for GPR, it detects uh, uh, the amplitude, uh, I mean the reflected signal based on the amplitude, and the amplitude is very dependent on the um, dielectric constant between the materials. For example, um, a concrete and metal, right? So um, GPR is very sensitive to metal, so you will get very good signal. Whereas uh, maybe if um, embedded material is uh, maybe PVC pipe, maybe you will not get a strong enough uh, signal as what you get with a uh, metallic object. Okay. Yeah, so um, what we have um, for POSEC GPRs, well, how we are different from the other GPRs in the market. So we are using a ultra wideband technology. We call it the uh, step frequency continuous wave. Um, what does this mean? In short, uh, it's very simple. 
um, in the market, if you are getting a low frequency uh, GPR, you are able to penetrate far, you can see far objects. But the thing is, you don't get good resolution near surface. On the other hand, um, on the other hand if you get a high frequency, you get very good resolution um, on near surface object, but then you lose out on the penetration. Effect. So um, uh, for users who wants to measure or detect objects from near surface to a very deep uh, depth, right? They have to get two GPS in the past. But for us, because we are using ultra wide band, uh, for one GPR, you can expect very good resolution for near surface detection. At the same time, you don't lose out on the depth penetration. So over the years, GPR has evolved a lot. Um, first, um, it came up with uh, this uh, first, uh, when, when we collect data, this is the signal and the, the screen that you see, the data that you see. Uh, this is what we call the non-migrated B scan. And over the years, and uh, with the algorithms and the softwares that we developed, right, uh, we move on to having B scan um, migrated view, which is uh, more clear for an untrained operator. Right? And then we move on to have tomography. We can use the time slice to check on the different depth to, uh, to, to interpret uh, rebars or data captured at different depths as per your requirement. And then for post GPR, we also have this 3D imaging and augmented reality. So what does all this do? It helps to, uh, it, it makes your interpretation simpler. So anyone with a GPR can perform a job uh, with maybe one, two hours of training. So next, um, I will discuss, uh, share with you our ecosystem of GPR. <clears throat> so as you know, uh, mentioned earlier, um, our GPRs are wireless. So they are connected to an iPad screen uh, via Wi-Fi. So uh, with the iPad, data is collected from the probe to the iPad, and then they are stored into the cloud system. Um, Prosec cloud system is free to use, and it has unlimited space for you to store your data. Right. And how can an iPad help you in, uh, in real life uh, scenario? So we have an iPad at work, maybe myself, I'm doing an, interpret, uh, I'm doing an inspection work at site. Right? And then because I'm using iPad, I can have another body of mine or my colleague in the office, okay, connect to my iPad via TeamViewer, Zoom, Skype, any uh, social media uh, program to view my iPad. So in the office, I can have experts help me to interpret the data on site while I'm, while I'm at site. What else? I can actually instantly share all this data to anyone in the world, just with a Wi-Fi connection. I will share them the link, and then they can immediately go to the site to view the data or even download the data for their further usage. Right, so for GPR, um, the most common two techniques that we use is uh, the line scan. So in this, uh, in this uh, data, we actually went to uh, Indonesia to do a scan on the bridge. Right. So as you can see um, on the image now, it's actually the non-migrated view. Okay, it's not so clear for maybe some uh, untrained eye, but then look at this. This is uh, the migrated view of the B scan. Uh, immediately, you can see the arc on the bottom, where, it's the arc, uh, where, where it shows the uh, actual bridge condition. And then the next one, is for, of course, um, the area scan where most people use uh, for uh, you know, coring application, for SBU verification. But I will show you a video. So we actually went down to site. Uh, we had a customer asking us if we can uh, help them to verify if there's any rebound structures in this column on site. So because um, the contractor that they use, uh, they, they, they did not trust them completely. So we went down to site and did a scan and here's what we found.
So we went down to site, we completed the scan in less than 30 minutes and immediately we are able to uh, advise the uh, contractor to double check this column because from the scan we are able to see a uh, very uh, small little hole at near the center of the uh, whole column and eventually they did, they hack out the, the, the column and uh, really um, that area is missing some revise uh, intended in the first place. Okay, so um, next we will move on. I will move on to touch on the, the two models of GPRs that we have. Um, so on the screen on the right top corner, we have the GP8000 and on the bottom, we have the GP8008, um, the smaller sibling. Okay, so our, as you can see, our instruments comes with no wire, it's totally wireless. And uh, we built the equipment, we designed the instrument based on uh, um, uh, operator needs. We built it uh, as economical, ergonomical as we can. So as you can see, um, we have extension rod, we have accessories to help users uh, do inspection. We have uh, iPad holder to fix onto the GP8000 to make inspection easier for the operator. But on the other hand, if you see um, the competitor products in the market, right, some of them, the handles are blocking their screen. So the user has to uh, maybe tilt left or even be in an awkward, aw aw awkward angle to look at the screen. Right, and it's bulky. And on the bottom right, you can see uh, the other uh, instrument in the market. They are so they have so many wires, right? So in the side, I think it is messy enough. We do not want uh, our own cables to, to be part of the mess to to, to increase uh, the, the mess. So ours, um, you can be assured that it's wireless. I mean, uh, you can be uh, it will be tidy when you go to site. So just comparison between the two GPS, why do we have these two GPS? Can one do the job of, uh, in, which the other, in, which, in which the other can't? So if you look at the first four points, they are basically the same, right? They can both uh, detect rebounds, they can both uh, detect post tension cables, they can detect other objects which are non-metallic too, right? And then we can also detect big points. Um, the thing is, uh, on the left side, the GP8000, because uh, it comes with an ultra-wide band from 0 0.2 to uh, 4 gigahertz, it can actually penetrate to, uh, to that of uh, near to 80 cm. Right? On the other hand, the smaller one, because its uh, frequency is uh, from 0 0.4 to 6 gigahertz, um, we actually tested and then we we found that it can be up, it can be good up to 65 cm. Um, the 50 cm here is uh, because we tried on the real side condition and we haven't had a case where we have tried 65 cm. Right. And then for the GP8000, its additional features is that it has a live wire uh, detection capability. Right. So if uh, in any case we want to check on a uh, building that is existing, you want to do coring job, you want to make sure that you don't want to hit all these live wires also. So this will come um, very handy if uh, that is the application that you are looking for, right? And then uh, for the smaller GP8800 on the right, if you look at the last three, uh, last three uh, points, uh, because of its uh, small, a uh, physic, phys uh, because of its small physic, right? We can let it move on the curved surfaces. On the bottom right, you can see the photos over there, and it can also go into confined spaces. And then later on, we will also discuss a little bit about cross-polarization, cross right? And then, of course, uh, both of our GPS, they have a fantastic resolution and they are good for any coring jobs out there. Okay, a short video to introduce our GP8800. Um, just uh, maybe uh, take note of how easily you can switch the wheels from side to side.